and welcome once again to The Randy Show. I am Brian Thompson with the James Randy Educational Foundation, and with me as always is Mr. James Randy. Good to see you, Brian, and uh, let's uh, move right into our topic, which I think you may find provocative, but then I'm known for introducing from time to time provocative subjects. Oh, I'm, I'm all for something provocative, so lay it on me. Okay. I um, came upon something rather peculiar the other day. I, I, I notice the strangest things, so as you know, Brian, I, I tend to notice these things, and this will be a bit of a surprise to you, but <laughs> this is from Publix Supermarkets. Now, Publix, P-U-B-L-I-X, is very well known in Florida. I don't know about the rest of the United States, but I'm sure they're in other venues as well. Do you have any where you are, as a matter of fact? Do you know? I'm not sure, but I, I know whenever I go to Atlanta, there's one basically every four or five feet. <laughs> well, Publix is uh, pervasive like that, yes, and, uh, and provocative at the same time, because this is a brand of clear fiber supplement. Now, this is something I take medically. It's a, it's a fiber supplement. It's not one of those laxative things. Uh, this just does things for my various parts of my body. Let's not get into the details of it. But it's a very simple thing. And it's, uh, they say it's soluble. That's wrong. It's mixable. It's not a soluble substance at all. But uh, it is very finely uh, divided. Uh, what is it? It's actually, do they say what it is here? Well, it's sugar-free and flavor-free, taste-free, and but it's not free when you buy it. Uh, no, the, the point is, this is the container. It says it's 8.6 ounces, and it's sold by weight. But and, and this will be a bit of a revelation to you. Well, perhaps not. What they say that when it's manufactured, that um, it's rather bulked up, you see, because of the way it's, it's produced, and uh, so it takes a while to settle. I can't imagine that it takes this long to settle. Take a look at this. You see this green line that I put on here? That green line marks the level inside this bottle of the actual substance. The substance, when you take the lid off and you take the seal off, now mind you, it's opaque, you notice. It's white, opaque. It's not transparent. If this were transparent, they would never sell a container of it because it's just below this little green mark that you see around here. This I put a piece of tape on in order to mark it indelibly for you. This is the level of what's actually in this container. Now that doesn't mean they're swindling us if it's sold by the ounce, by weight and such. That's just fine. But I really think that's very um, seductive and deceptive on the part of the packagers. I think this this should come to the attention of the FDA or somebody, if they had any personnel that would look after this sort of thing or have any interest in, in it whatsoever. But this is a deceptive feature. And uh, I really think, I've, I've written to Publix about it, and I get no response whatsoever. They just don't answer. They ignore it altogether. It gets filed in what they call the, the circular filing cabinet, the waste paper basket, I'm sure. But... Uh, I think this is something that more people should pay a little bit of attention to. When you see an opaque container like this, wonder just how much of this... See, that could be this height right here very easily, and it would be quite adequate to contain the contents. It doesn't take that long for it to settle out. Maybe when it's manufactured, it's this full, but I'm sure that settles out rather quickly, and maybe just a quick like that on a table would settle it up. You know, I always get a little bit annoyed whenever I open a bag of potato chips and it's half empty. And then later on, I'm grateful for it because I would eat the whole thing. <laughs> well, I'm sure over the years you've dealt with a lot of manufacturers of pseudoscientific bunk, like, you know, homeopathic <laughs> remedies and things like that. Oh. And they seem to always sort of skirt the line between lying and deceiving in their packaging. So what can you say about the, the way that, you know, regulatory bodies like the, the FDA and the FTC deal with deception versus outright lying? Well, I've been preparing the text for a magician in the laboratory, as you know, uh, rather frantically. I'm coming along very well with it, thank you. And uh, the book should go to the publishers, I think, within the next uh, 60 days. Uh, but... I find out that the FDA just doesn't have staff. They don't have people there 
who can look after this kind of thing. They have no interest in it whatsoever because they're swamped. Now, this is not unlike some other government agencies as well, but I would think that the FDA might get some sort of priority at treatment. I think the FDA needs to look into these things as they need to look into homeopathic remedies, so-called. I use that word in quotations all the time, of course. I think they, they need some additional help. They need someone to supervise what they're doing and provide them with adequate personnel. They just don't have it. The same with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office uh, in Washington. They don't have enough people either. So they're, they're issuing uh, patents on perpetual motion machines and free energy machines left and right because they just don't have the staff to filter these things out. Now, you would think that perpetual motion machines as, as an automatic classification would be classified as fake, don't work. They simply cannot work. The laws of physics won't allow them to work. But the deluded out there, the, the great deluded inventors who sell these things all the time, and they sell stock in them, and some of them get very, very wealthy, like the Stern Company, S-T-E-O-R-N Company, and I think that's Denmark, or is it Sweden? I think Sweden. Uh, they have been selling uh, this device for the longest time and promising demonstrations of it, and I've watched the demonstrations on TV, and the wheel turns around like crazy, and then they get a capture, and they get it, and it stops, and they look, and they say, oh, what happened? It stopped, Dumbo, because this sort of thing will not work. But they seem to think that it will work, and they, they promise demonstrations. They they go, oh, well, tune in in 48 hours. We'll have it working. Duh. This is something that, that they can get away with because there just aren't enough folks out there to monitor this kind of thing and relieve people of their delusions that are perhaps even shared by the inventors. So I guess the lesson here is for everybody, before you buy anything, do your research, make sure it works, make sure it's not woo, and also make sure that that package is full. I guess the only way to do that, though, is to open things up in the store, and peek exactly. inside. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I, uh, I intend to take this back to Publix and show them the level at which uh, their particular brand of uh, this uh, digestible fiber is uh, set. I, Maybe I can get an argument. Maybe after this podcast, someone at Publix will pay it. No, I don't think so. Probably they not. Don't. Probably they don't. not. But, but you can update us in a future episode. Of course. The Randy Show is a production of the James Randy Educational Foundation. To learn more about how we promote science and critical thinking, go to randy.org.